It's Friday. Do you know where your IT pros are? We don't. It's Patch and Switch. And now, two guys who barely made it into the studio due to all the Canadian candy contraband. It's Patch and Switch. <laughs> I can't believe this is actually working. <laughs> Did you change the password? I didn't change the password. Did you change the password? I think I think you did, man. Okay. I, I didn't know. change the password. It was so it wasn't you. It I don't know. Not are we on? on? Is this we are we're on. We're, is it we're streaming. streaming. We're streaming. Yeah, I can see it. I, I've got a green screen in front of me, so I don't know what, what's going on. <laughs> I do. I can actually see our uh, live broadcast, and there's eight people viewing. Already? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Oh, if, if I was on Facebook, I would promote that. I'd share it to my timeline. Would you? I would share it. I can't. So for the five or six people that are there, please share on your timelines that yes. you're actually watching. I'm actually going to do that Patch right and now. Switch. See, I'm going to share that. My my 16 friends that I have on Facebook would yeah. only see it, and that's it. Oh, what? I I look very strange with these earmuffs on. I think this is in tribute to uh, the uh, Kylo and Ren Moose Delivery Service. Uh, the the keep new my ears the warm. new Canadian delivery service that we're yeah. bound to open. Yes. Uh, oh, I see. Strategically, we left one of the contraband bags uh, in camera shot. Oh, we should probably take that out. <clears throat> it's good. Uh, apparently, somebody made a Canadian run for us. Uh, that would be J Flow. Yeah. J Flow, who, who like, came in the and mysterious yeah. hand that just grabbed that bag. Exactly. Bag. He he made a Canadian run for us. I'll try to I'll try to keep this product placement out of the camera. I appreciate that. Right there. Yes. No, this way. There All we right, go. Keep going. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Not right <of> camera. <laughs> Hey, welcome to the big program, everybody. We are back. I'm still trying to find where we're actually streaming from, so yeah. it's okay. So uh, we're back in the room. We're um, back in the studio. We no longer we've upgraded our TV based captioning. Yes. To the magic of green screen keyed. So we're actually the You're background. You're not supposed to tell them that. No, no. This, I have to reveal some of the secrets behind this. How this works. Um, so this is actually uh, live translation taking place. Uh, there are 16 people in the room next to us that are typing furiously, <laughs> trying to catch up with what we're saying uh, for live captioning. Too bad none of them speak English. None of them speak English, and we're also paying them um, <laughs> what we're saying. A oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I've, that's me. I've got to do this thing. Yeah, right. you can't have the inception of multiple audio going in. No, I know, but I needed the chat. Oh, okay. Because I need to say hello to everybody. Okay, so, so <laughs> we have the captions going. Uh, things have gone awry. Things are going crazy, um, and it's and uh, we're back in the room. So I got to say, it's nice to be home, back in the home base in the secret it bunker, uh, otherwise known as Studio C, and building something or other on campus. Um, and uh, we have our very competent and uh, technically accurate um, audio engineer running the cameras for us. Yeah, because Mr. Jay Shock. After the last show. No, the last show was a cluster. Yeah, absolutely. I can say the word and watch the stars come up because they don't actually type in stars. No, you can't say the word because so I can't, you'd have it, to edit it. it's live. Right? Yeah. Uh, and I actually found the old, the, I found our previous live stream. Um, oh, did you? And the, I downloaded The episode it. that we did with the TV in the background? I downloaded it and the resolution is like 480 by 640 or something like that. Oh, apparently we were streaming at a high rate, uh, yeah. high bit rate. No, that's all that they give you for a download. You no, can only download a standard. It's based on what you send, isn't it? I have no idea. Oh, okay. You think I know this stuff? Well, I know we're sending 720 here because oh, I, I set this seven, up. We're seven, you're sending 720 here. I should take my... my uh, a big hello to Jane. Big hello to Mark. Uh, Hardjit has joined us. Um, Hjit in the house. Uh, our side of non. Uh, everybody's favorite Hjit. Uh, Art's joined us. Uh, Colleen is supposed to be doing something. <laughs> She's not. She's watching the show. Uh, Ledwig is here, and he mentioned nice captioning. So a big hello to Ledwig. What are you doing? I'm all tangled up. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> uh, I, I do have to comment on uh, your attire today. Yes. I am embracing. You're embracing your inner Hufflepuff. The inner Hufflepuff. Uh, as as a, a lot of you know, uh, we were at the Ignites uh, in Orlando. Uh, we did go visit the Sorting Hat. And the Sorting Hat confirmed yes. what I knew all along. Hufflepuff. You were a hundred percent Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff, and, and know, I'm Gryffindor. If you look so at the characteristics of Hufflepuff, it fits because I'm extremely loyal. Okay, Hufflepuffs are extremely loyal. Okay, there you go. I don't know what else they do, but they're loyal. <laughs> you only know that because you talked to the attendant at the shop. Yeah, and she said, "Oh, good, you're Hufflepuff." You need to read the books. I have read the books. Well, you need. Well, some Obviously, of the books. <laughs> you haven't paid. Does it count if I skip to the end? No, it does on Amazon. If you skip to the end on your Kindle, it says you've read it. 
<laughs> if you just go to the end of the 7,000 pages, it just works. So done with you. Can I introduce you to Audible, please? Audible? Audible. What's Audible? You can just listen to the book. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Is Seriously? that a service they have? It is a you service. You can subscribe to this thing? Yes. Wow. See, I don't have a long enough commute to listen to Audible. What are you talking about? I listen. I don't to either anymore, but I still do. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It, I I don't know. I don't have the time. It's it's. I'm in the car. <laughs> Is that when you listen to audibles in the car? Uh, well, I listen to podcasts. 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 I listen podcasts. to podcasts and audibles, especially during meetings. Oh yeah, during meetings. <laughs> oh, oh nice. is that what you always have the headphones in? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, Aubrey's joined us. As has Chuck. Um, nice. And um, let's see. Na -na. It, it, it's it's really difficult to read the chat because yeah it, it just scrolls like messages well it's not on my machine, do they do so. do they do um little happy faces and stuff like that too uh I I, yes i think so i haven't seen any okay. so apparently nobody's liking us right I know. now that's crazy it, it happens it happens but we're back from orlando we're here we have we the room back again we've got our very competent mr jay shock running the show we he paid our amex bill working. the amex bill has been paid has not been approved yet but has been submitted so I'll just say that. <laughs> I, I'm a little concerned because well, that was a really If either you or group. I get a Wednesday meeting at 3 o'clock yeah. uh, inside a building that we don't work in, we should be concerned. Okay. Because uh, that's when they, they uh, discipline people. We we now have lots of things flying, flying across, across the bottom. The are, nice. are there? I can't even see. I wish, I wish that they would uh, put in the emoticon or the, the icon. Do you guys remember flying toasters? Yes. Back in the day, the flying toaster I screensaver. Remember the flying toasters. Those were good. I remember the flying toasters. Oh, yeah. Flying toasters. Flying toasters were good. So, I mean, the screensaver. We can, can kind of show up. Oh, that's what it looks oh, like. Oh, look, the delay. I see it. Yeah. The delay. Nice. Uh, I want to talk about something that we were unable to before we get into the program here. And the mic keeps still. So, down. Do, Sorry. should we explain that we need to apologize for the length of the last show? Okay, we should let's, address let's that do first. that. Let's address that first. Because we run a very tight ship of exactly 58 minutes long, or sometimes one hour and one minute. Like, we're within a window, right? We know exactly when we can leave to go get coffee and come back in time for this to start. I've only been wrong about three times. And then, only. And then we, get to the, we get to the showcase floor at uh, Microsoft Tonight inside the reconditioned restaurant. Uh, and uh, we start. We start a little bit late because of some difficulties, as was expected. Uh, but then all of a sudden, we're in the middle of our of our episode, and then we get the you know two minute warning finger. Yeah, he's, he's doing. He's <laughs> doing you imagine which thing. finger I'm talking about that we get. Yeah, he's doing the whole wrap it up thing, and I'm like, we got another 15 minutes, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, and then and then we. So I keep going because I'm like, oh, he's just giving me the warning that the, the show's about you know and just he paying to, attention to time, right? He starts to play us out. He did. We got played out by our own band. I know. Eh? Which was which? This band was actually amazing. It was the uh, Patch and Switch All Star Orchestra, uh, which was a gathering of people remote from all of the theme parks in Orlando. Jared, you're not going to get paid for another couple of years based on that alone. Hey, whatever. Yeah. He's sorry. He gets payment in hugs. <laughs> warm hugs. Warm hugs. <laughs> I like warm hugs. Uh, so we we got played out. Uh, and, and there was just a miscommunication. Yep. Uh, so and next I, next year we'll fix it. <laughs> yep. We'll, we'll correctly align the stars to get the proper amount of time. Uh, so so the stuff that we didn't cover. There is. And what did you want to cover? <laughs> I want to talk about this. I, I've seen your car, dude. Your Jeep. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty. It's, it's pretty badass. I, I have to say. Yeah. So I have to lend a big round of thanks and, and applause over to. Um, uh, Mr. Pierre Roman, who's joined us, Pierre from, has, uh, has joined us the program from uh, Montreal, as has CA and Frederick Bork. As, there we go, and also Wireless Life, Mr. Anthony Bartolo. They came down a couple of weeks before we had to leave, uh, and uh, random help me random spend uh, install a lot of stuff on my Jeep that's been waiting to happen, and uh, it's rather interesting because we have issues. I had issues with mechanical stuff sometimes, and trying to figure out uh, no. what needs to go where. Uh, but I was allowing them to basically drive the boat and let them let them go. Uh, and basically, they would say, "Here, take this wrench and turn that nut, or whatever it was." And that's what I would do. Right. And I, I was I was the gopher. There. I was, when I was there because I was also the gopher to get missing parts. But it's very hard to go get missing parts when you only have one car, and that one car is up on blocks because it's being worked on. So <laughs> yeah. we actually had to get the motorcycle working, which had a dead battery, to be able to go off and to get the parts in the rain that were needed to be able to finish off different chunks of it. So just to loop everybody in. 
When you ordered everything, you didn't have all of the parts. Correct. I was missing a couple of parts. I didn't know. Okay. And then you didn't realize that you were missing said parts until the, the car, the only car that you had is up on block. It was already had the wheels off and the suspension dropped. Okay. Yeah. So then you alternate over to the Part motorcycle, of tools, which too. currently... The, so the motorcycle actually was unplugged by my daughter. Ah. And therefore the battery had died. And I got it started after jumping the motorcycle off of the Jeep that was up on blocks. Uh, and that got it running, which was good. And then I, then Bartolo said, why don't you just take it for a ride around, make sure it all holds the charge and builds it back up again. It's all great. I go riding around the neighborhood in the rain and realize that I'm out of gas. So I go over to the gas station and then turn off the ga turn off the motorcycle to fill up the motorcycle. I'm like, oh, that's probably a bad idea. And then I fill up the motorcycle. It takes like three seconds because it's got a small tank. And then I go to start the motorcycle. It doesn't start. So then I have to go get it jumped. Then I have to get it working again. Then I come back. Then I leave it running. Then I go down the hill. I got to pick up the parts. And then while I'm down there, I might as well like, hey, I'll buy a new battery because the battery's dead. So I buy a new battery. The battery doesn't fit. I don't have any tools to take the old battery out. So I go over to the store and I take a socket set off of the shelf to be able to take the battery apart to be able to get the old battery out. And then I buy the new battery. Then I buy the tools that I use to install the battery. And then I put the thing back together again. And then I got back on the bike and I went over to Home Depot to buy the missing part. Because the first place I went to didn't have the part that was missing. So at Home Depot, I then went and uh, talked to a guy and I showed him the bolt and I said, this is what I have to have. And he handed me the new bolt. I took the bolt and the nut back up the hill to be able to put it in for the, the rear suspension. But uh, it's not going in easily. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just kind of force it through. No problem. Don't force a bolt through a hole that it should slide through because it seizes inside of the bushing on the rubber that now is spinning because it's bolted into the bolt. And then that took four hours to grind that bolt out and then detach the shock and then drill the bolt out of the bushing without melting the rubber bushing. How did you do this? This was all done with the patience and grace and serenity of Bartolo and Pierre, who probably were cursing under their breath the entire time for me. Were they cursing or are they just going... We predicted this. Well, I, I just kept on saying sorry all the time. So, <laughs> And then they were <laughs> saying do. sorry because I was feeling uncomfortable because they're Canadian too. Right. But then anyway, eventually so everybody's came apologizing. Uh, yeah, everybody's <laughs> apologizing all around. Apologies flying all over the place. I just want to point out the open captions didn't spell sorry right. Sorry. To, oh, see, it must be American. Yeah. yeah. It's the American version. American version of captions. America. Uh, so then the thing, so the long and the short of this is three Canadians... And the one Canadian who's not mechanically inclined as much as the other guys that were there put a standard bolt into a metric hole and it was too big and got bound up and had to be drilled out, which delayed the project by four hours. That finally got it back together again, got it all done, I had to drive to the air to their to their hotel to go and stay. As we're driving down the road and I hit a little bit of a bump and we're driving because it's suspension, all of a sudden the wheel shakes like this. And then I'm like, ah, oh, it's just probably just me getting used to this now. And we're driving around. It's all fine. It's all good. But then every once in a while, the wheel shakes. And I'm like, what's Not going fine. on? Not fine. <laughs> so I thought it was just normal. That's you know, I'm, I'm dry. It shakes like this. A little bit of a shimmy. And uh, a little bit of a shimmy. A little bit of a okay. shimmy in the front end, in the front steering uh, should be fine when you're doing 60 miles an hour. It should be fine because it wasn't 100 kilometers an hour. It's only 60 miles an hour. Um. No one <laughs> Am I the only one really worried about the? Oh, it should be fine. It should be fine. It's still a little loose. It'll, it'll, it'll tighten up. So anyway, a week and change later, um, it's still doing the little shimmy. But it's getting worse. So I'm getting concerned. So I a week, week or later. two later. I was, I was away. A week I was away. Later. I was in Ignite. I was away. And I come back, and I'm driving back from the airport. It gives a little shimmy, shimmy again. A shimmy? So, that, so, that, so that, that weekend, I go back under the Jeep, and I'm looking at all the different bolts, and I'm tightening them all up. They're all tight. Uh, but then there's one bolt. So there's this, I don't know, what's, there's this big piece of metal that goes from the left-hand driver's side frame down across the suspension drive shaft, not, uh, axle, and then ties into the right-hand side. Apparently, that's not a sway bar. That's a control arm. There's control arms that go front to back, and there's a control arm that goes down this way. In the instructions, it didn't say to loosen the top bolt of the control arm, only the bottom bolt, to be able to make everything fit. So when I was checking everything, I was following the instructions to tighten everything again, and everything was all fine. But we had actually loosened the top bolt, too to be able to fix something else that wasn't working. We had four guys on the bumper trying to jump up and down to make something fit at one point. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so I didn't know the top bolt was loose until I went there and I was checking. shaking his head, which I is was, what I'm doing. I was actually, this would have been a perfect time to demonstrate uh, HoloLens Skype to be able to get another person's like space center consultation about the U-Bend that's not working or something like that. So the top bolt was loose. I found it. I got my air wrench out and I got the other wrench out and I just zipped it together and it went and it literally turned like four times. The bolt turned four times. That's how loose it was. <laughs> so it got pretty loose. Uh, and then when I tightened it up and I took it for a test drive, um, the shimmy was gone. It's, it's, ama it's amazing what happens when you actually tighten down the bolt. Yeah, but I never knew that one was loose. So the long story now short, I guess I should probably end this up. Uh, two and a half inch lift kit, a steering compensation correction, um, <laughs> <laughs> and the bolt that t attaches the steering compensation correction. Uh, new front and back bumpers, uh, new winch. Um, the winch that was donated by Mr. J Shock, um, unfortunately, that you didn't use, that I didn't use, that I should have used um, because it was dirty. It was dirty. I couldn't put the dirty God. winch on top of the brand new bumper. You could have cleaned it. Could have cleaned it, but but uh, anyway. It's all in. It's beautiful. It's great. I still have to to uh, do a couple other things, but it could not have happened without random spending. That was my massive random spending that I did this year. Steve Lane says uh, via the chat that it's time to find a good mechanic and pay them. I know, eh? So uh, uh, Golna says, uh, d "G Money, uh, who I believe is is handling she's a, she's the current live broadcast yeah, uh, out she's on, of she's on New York City, Boston, New York City, New NYC. York City, uh, New York City." I follow, I follow Seth yeah, right. online. Yeah, I, I thought they were in. Okay, so anyway, they're they're live streaming Boston. Uh, the the red shirt live. I thought I thought it was Boston. Maybe it was New York. Uh, Kansas Scranton. No Scranton, no, Idaho. She's not in Scranton. Scranton, Idaho. At any rate, she's like, I'm amazed that we got this working. Oh, yeah. So are we? With the Jeep point. or the closed captioning? And both. Both. <laughs> More amazed about the Jeep. The Jeep. So frankly, uh, so I still have my uh, transmission to drop. Transmission pan. To drop, not the transmission. I've got to drop the transmission pan. I have to drain the differential oils front and back, um, and then I've got to re I've got to refill those oils <laughs> after I drain them. Uh, and then I've actually got a replacement transmission pan to put on. Um, yeah, so that's been my random spend. It's been that's a big more than random spending. That's I that's don't break the bank. I don't know how you manage to get safely off of the freeway when your <laughs> entire steering it's, system. It just was loose only at a certain point. And, and, then and only at certain speeds. No, no, but it's, it's, it would work. It would do the same thing at 25 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour. I didn't try and it. this didn't concern you when you test drove it? It only randomly showed up. at a certain, Like if you had the right amount of force as you're making a turn, uh, at speed is when it would kick in. And a little bit of a bump to, to, actu to actuate it. Uh, Jane mentions that the uh, captioning system is providing some interesting alternatives. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's, we're teaching that's what it. Happens. Yeah, yeah, we're teaching yeah, we it. are it's learning. It's, it's all, all of Microsoft's technology that's going into this is learning how to speak because of this podcast right now. So it's going to be speaking Canadian? It's going to have a Canadian influence. It's going to be rapidly speaking Canadian because okay. Frederick was like, what are you trying to do? Set a new world record for <laughs> words a minute? But <laughs> I had to fit the story in. Uh, let's see. Frederick says it's important to follow the specs uh, for the transmission. Yeah, uh, otherwise I bought it. A break. I bought a new torque wrench to make sure they were torqued correctly. Apparently, shimmy was translated as chamois. <laughs> so there was a random chamois. Yes, yeah, my Jeep. Oh well, it's shimmy, it shimmy, shimmy this time. time, but chamois. It, it, it's it's your Canadian it's accent, dude. It's picking it up. Je ne sais quoi si je parle français. Qu'est-ce qu'il va faire? <laughs> <laughs> We need to have a new segment on the show, which is called <laughs> Fun with Captions. Fun with Captions. In case you're interested, you can actually go to the URL in the top right-hand corner, and you can actually see this on a remote device. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. And if we want to get really funky, we could actually go with multiple microphone inputs, and uh, you would appear on the right, and I would appear on the left if we wanted to get that crazy. Really? I don't know how to do it, but I don't apparently know that's, pos that's a possibility. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's kick off the program and talk about uh, oh, that's, things. We're only we, halfway through. Only halfway through. That's 20, uh, 20 minutes or so. Yeah, well, we started three minutes late, so it's all good. Uh, let's talk about uh, from the trenches, the stuff that we're doing, stuff that's happening in the works, stuff that we're doing every single day. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? We shipped everything at, at Ignite, didn't you? Yeah, there's a massive amounts of shipping that was going on. 
Um, the big things that were coming out at Ignite were Cloud Shell, PowerShell. That was there. Yeah. That was kind of nice to be yeah. able to see that. Very, very nice. The one that you disclosed on our show. Yeah, but it... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Corey wasn't too happy about that, but it was only to yep. a closed room, so it didn't matter. A closed room of 8,000 people. A closed room of 8,000 people heard about it three hours before we were supposed to talk about it. That's all right. Smooth so, move. Yeah. So Are you was, surprised, Jay Shaw? No. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, they they need to have big blinking disclaimers on emails that say, "Rick, do not disclose," and then I would know <laughs> that it's not good. Speaking of which, I do want to um, give a big shout out again to our guests who joined us live on stage. Uh, so Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Snover, uh, Corey Sanders, um, Alex Simons, and of course Donna Sarker, uh, who actually would love to come to this the version. studio. And do a live version of the Passion Switch. <laughs> that, that'd be mayhem. Which I, I need yeah. to talk to her. She <laughs> <laughs> Got to give her the appropriate warning. Yeah. Make sure she signs that legal disclosure form. Yeah, uh, no kidding. Because I would. And, and, and the insurance with that form, and, by the way. And, and the insurance liability uh, mm -hmm. clause. Four clause. No, no, the, the clause insurance liability. <laughs> the clause insurance liability. The clause, clause insurance liability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Steve Lane. Wait. What is that? A new Tilly. Oh, it's can you tell? Yeah, so it's, it's a very clean Tilly. It's, yeah, it's clean very Tilly, not ratted. So, so it, uh, it looks almost Italian. Yeah, it has a little bit of Italian influence to it. It's it's got a slight accent, Italian accent. Um, Italian Rick's Tilly hat Canadian at hat? sign. Rick's Tilly hat. Uh, unfortunately, has seen better days. And during Ignite, he actually had a breakdown. Uh, oh, a, a substantial full breakdown. full breakdown. He lost his head. Literally lost his head. Uh, and he required surgery, open hat surgery. Open hat surgery. Uh, front and back. And we managed to piece him together long enough to be able to survive the conference. Uh, and then uh, the funny thing is that my disaster recovery hat was geodiversified back at home in Seattle, in, in Redmond, on my table because I forgot to grab it. And so <laughs> luckily the hat was able to slog through the last dying days of, of the hat. And uh, he currently is now in a retirement home in hospice care. And uh, he's, he's hoping that the ACA will stick around long enough to pay for the hospice care. Uh, because um, he's, when he does pass, uh, the soul and sentiment of the hat gets transferred to the new replacement hat. Okay. And this one was actually uh, hand-delivered by one of our drug mules. Um, that provide Drug us mules? The, the, the coffee crisp mules okay. that provide us the, the say, Canadian be careful there. They, they provide we have us translation. Now yeah. people can see this. Well, they said drug, drug meals. meals were good. Oh, drug meal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so, it is Washington. So certain yeah, drugs, certain are, drugs yeah. are allowed, you know, but not allowed to cross edibles. the border. Edibles. <laughs> nice. Um, so, uh, Mr. Bartolo, uh, was, was gracious enough to locate and source a seven and five eighths hat. That is an empty shell waiting for the soul of Rick's Tilly hat to be transplanted. And uh, he could only find it in Woodbridge. Woodbridge. Where's Woodbridge? Woodbridge is kind of like... Uh, Woodenville? No, it's, was, was it Woodbridge or Woodenville? I think it was... Well, no, it wasn't Woodenville. Woodville is here. No, see, w w there has to be like a, a little Italy somewhere around in Seattle somewhere. Is there like a... Like, uh, An Italian district? Yeah, I got a guy. I got a guy. He's going to go off and see someone? No, that's Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. That's Chicago. That's, that's more East Coast. So yeah. it's, Seattle. what would you say? Like, you know, like the Godfather accent kind of thing, you know? Like, well, if, you, um, if you give the Godfather a Swedish accent, it'd be Ballard. <laughs> that could work. Um, so anyway, <laughs> you have Woodbridge, Woodbridge up, in, up, up in Canada, Ontario, uh, was the only place where he could actually put his hands on a physical hat uh, that did not have to be manufactured at the... At the at the at the factory, and I brought it down, and I of course left it at home because I'm an idiot. Um, so you left the failover hat, the failover and the hat, the, the, the failover hat. No, the original hat and my disaster recovery hat. This right. is a disaster recovery hat. Oh, which the is new left one. Okay, there. gotcha. Now there is a backup hat which is currently offline. That's my cold spare. The cold spare is in New York City uh, right now with Mary Jo. She has the cold spare. Uh, that's, that's that's the offsite. It's the offsite, and backup. it's actually left inside of a glass box that has a hammer next to it that says break and say sorry in case of emergency <laughs> so <laughs> you're a jerk <laughs> i perfectly timed that when he was taking a drink of his coffee um so uh so anyway i'm gonna have a um post thanksgiving uh, uh proper viking burial on the stormwater pond behind the house 
on the storm stormwater <laughs> pond behind the house. I've got a, I've got a, I've already got the boat built uh, that I'm going of course to you use, do. Uh, and I've been collecting various different pieces of wood from my mechanic shop. Point of that order. are coated in oils to be able to put onto the boat, and then I put the the hat on top of the boat. Point of order. Yes. How many injuries did you sustain making the boat? Um, uh, they're healed now. Do they count if they're healed? Because <laughs> my scratches are gone on my hands. Uh, second point of order. How much insurance do we have to buy to have this Viking funeral? No, it's exactly. not involves flame. <laughs> what could go wrong? It's a boat that's going to oh, be God. lit on fire on top of a pond. Like it's going to burn out. Wood run that's off. been built with various. Automotive oils. Well, that's just accelerant. To a runoff that's pond all. that has a lot of. You think the runoff is an environmental oils. disaster? I know. To happen. There's no wildlife that live in this pond. It's just water. Oh God! You think it's just water? I don't know. So there's you know um, well, wildlife so, that lives around. Well, they can drink I, from I the should pond. time this when uh, Diwali's on. Because oh God. we could use fireworks to light it in the center. No, no, I could fire stop, fireworks no, out of my hand no. and hit the boat I and light it on fire. No, I, stop. I, I that can work? already see your wife just... <laughs> No, 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 no. So yeah. that does it for another episode of the Patch and Switch program. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our current liability has run out. <laughs> for the year. <laughs> for the next year. What are you talking about? Just the year? Yeah, for the next year. Yeah. So... So Viking anyway, funeral. there has to be a Viking funeral for okay. the previous hat. It, so, it is no longer able to be used as a warranty exchange because I modified it. With, because uh, you had to... Because I had to modify it to keep it alive. Yeah, you had, so it, because it was, you had to sew it, it's no longer... Because it was it was modified, yeah. You can't modify it. So even if it's coming apart, you can't sew it back together to but have it... You can, you can have it claimed. <clears throat> but I was going to get it fixed with warranty, but in the States, they make you mail it to New York City. It gets inspected and analyzed for three weeks before they send you a replacement one. <laughs> and it takes two weeks to ship. So I would have been without a hat for five weeks. Uh, Unacceptable. Yeah. Unacceptable. But now you've got the new hat. But so but the new you hat. you do an exchange on the old hat. The new hat. So I can't do exchange on the old because it's been modified. I well, what if it. you take all the threads out? I can't. You don't understand, man. Like If I touch one of those threads, it will just spontaneously crumble. It'll be gone. <laughs> okay. Absolutely so, gone. So, so I, I, I can say I'm very happy that I took a six-month course in fabric modification university. It paid off. Underwater basket reading? No, it was my fine arts degree. I actually took a six-month course in fabric I've modification. I've been watching the Facebook Live audience numbers just completely just <laughs> dropped. <laughs> <laughs> right. Goodbye. Nice. Hey, goodbye. Should we talk about technology at some point? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk so about like what we do in what, what, what you're doing because I had already kicked that off like ten minutes ago. Oh yeah. Well, someone mentioned the hat and I got distracted. My cable's all tangled up here somewhere. Jesus. This is just there another show. What? It's another patch and <laughs> switch okay. episode. What? What have you been doing for work? Do you actually do work? Because I don't. I never see you anymore. I have a new so. job. So what's the new job, man? What do you do? I have what's a your new day job. job like? Uh, so I've changed now. I, I was doing documentation in the identity team, and now I'm. I'm still on the identity team. I'm actually still in the same actual team that I was on. I'm just doing new work uh, where I am working to get our partners, particularly our solution integrator partners, system integrator partners, whatever you want. I, SI, is it solutions? It's SI, system yeah. integrator. So the SIs uh, to help get our customers deployed and to get them ready. And what I work on is what we call a high potential partner, which would be partners that may not traditionally have a Microsoft identity practice and get them up and running and, and good to go. So uh, a little bit of a change. Uh, just wanted to kind of branch out, explore nice. different things. Oh, yeah. Uh, expand, grow, grow the career. Grow the career. So that's what I'm doing now. Nice. Uh, so a lot of time on the road up and coming. So there may be some, some shows where... So I, I, I generally fly home Thursday, so I'm home for most Fridays. But there are going to be occasions... Like when I go to Sydney, that I can't get back in time for the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's very nice. The, the Facebook uh, audience wants to know: is it, is it your boat that is going to be used for the Viking? <laughs> no, <laughs> my boat will not be used for the Viking. Yeah, there actually is an on ramp you can use to get your boat. No, in the water. <laughs> I have. See now, I also have a kayak I could use if I need to. I've got a two-person kayak. I it's freaking to fiberglass, it. dude. Well, that doesn't burn, so it's fine. Where did you see that? I didn't see it in the comments. Is it somewhere else? It's on the, it's on the live stream. It's, it's not keeping I'm, up. I'm in the live stream. Okay. It's I don't not understand how this yeah. technology works. I don't either. So so my job 
Job-wise, uh, I'm now officially transitioning to over to a new team as well uh, after Ignite. Oh, and, <laughs> uh, and uh, the team the team is still inside of the Linux compute the Linux compute Azure compute team uh, area, and I do stuff with Linux specifically. And um, I'm looking after one of our larger distribution partners right now. Um, and I'm actually taking on another distribution partner as well to be able to assist with some technologies that I can't talk about just yet, but uh, should make things a lot easier for enterprises to go off and to embrace using Linux on top of the Azure platform. Can't talk about it, man. Sorry, man. Man, man, man. I can't talk about it. Uh, I'm also going to be helping out another person that's doing some new stuff and developing a new service from scratch. Again, something I can't talk about right now, but sounds very cool. Uh, and I still do documentation stuff, um, but. Um, I've actually got my backup machine is now full-time running Linux again. Uh, and I've got my main service here running Windows, obviously. Um, it actually warned me before starting the show that it was waiting to deploy the fall update. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it the fall creators the update? The creators update? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So my main desktop got the fall creators update. Yep. And I tweeted that out, that it was getting it. I didn't yeah. realize that it actually tweeted that out a week before it was released. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The, the, the whole insiders already knew and were already talking about the well, fact the that the numbers already had it. No, I know. Yeah. But, but like I just tweeted a picture of the fact that it was doing an upgrade and it was and I did a version info and it was the proper version info. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's what I'm getting here today. Yeah. And then two hours later on the live stream that was going on, that was during that day from, I think it was New York City when they did the announcement of all the different yeah. stuff. And they announced the actual release was coming on the 17th. And, and like the rot. Like retweeted my retweet, and I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't delete that now. But it wasn't anything. Well, you private. can, but it no one sent the email that said, "Don't talk about this." I don't know. So I was safe. Donna did not come and berate me at all for any reason. So it's okay. Good. And no, no. Terry didn't show up. Terry didn't show up, and okay. no special meetings happened <laughs> on Wednesday in a building I don't normally work in. Well, that's good. You're Very good. For another week. Very good. Safe for one more week. Safe for one more week. Uh, let's talk about uh, beer money, the support that we do. Um, we were away for quite some time. Did you do any remote goes. beer money? Uh, I did not have to do any remote beer money. I did some remote beer money just uh, earlier this week uh, with the um, the crack. Oh yeah. The K. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did a remote update of the entire. Uh, internal infrastructure, though I know of your house also need to be updated. Yeah. But Ubiquity, uh, shout out to Ubiquity. Oh yeah, man, they had patches out day of. They did. Um, I set mine I, to I auto just realized my controller. Well, my the problem was is my controller's running Linux. Yeah, and it doesn't auto update. You need to you need to run an update. And yeah. I didn't realize how far I was behind. So yeah, I had to get updated there. Okay. Uh, so I ran the update. Nice. Uh, and and got all of that done. And then last night, uh, so our kids were out of school today. Yeah. I was not aware of this. Is that why they didn't get up? That's why they didn't get up. <laughs> They're sleeping in. Yeah. No. Uh, and so last night, um, when the when the Wi-Fi shuts down, I get a text message from the teenager asking for... The extension? Uh, yeah, an extension to Wi-Fi, to which I started replying using nothing but GIFs. Nice. <laughs> or is it GIF? <laughs> It's is a it GIF. GIF or it's GIF? A GIF. GIF. It's a GIF. See, I say GIF, but there's there's a huge movement for GIF. I know. Like, and they, it's and they it's almost wrong. as passionate of people that goes with tabs are or spaces. And they are wrong. Do you use is tabs? It <laughs> what is it? Is it, it Jaffix? Jaffix? Do you Jaffix. say graphics? Jaffix? Yeah. Nice. Draphics? Draph yeah. Anyway. I've noticed that you're using a lot more GIFs in your tweets these days, too. I am. We had a whole conversation about coffee crisps, which kind of, I think, was in part of this. Yes. Because it started off because our our coffee crisp mule from the north. See, Aubrey says it's Jeff with a J. Yeah, I see. That's just wrong. So he... Uh, so it's graphics. It's, gra it. it's graphics. Graphics. So, so it started off uh, with... instead of gaming. Actually, my wife commented about how many gifts you're using to, yeah. to respond <laughs> on things and you're doing stuff. Because they were good. Yeah, they were definitely good. If, if, I, if I you have don't have... If you don't... Yeah, exactly. The guy <laughs> yeah. L L Ledwig was doing some very interesting options for flavored coffee no, crisps, so this which are just wrong. wrong. It's totally wrong. It's completely wrong. That's yeah, so obviously... You agree. You agree with yes, me, absolutely. even as a Canadian, that you don't have nope. coffee crisp nope. hot chocolate. No, you do not. You do not. It does not work. So... Uh, Coffee crisp were there, but then he brought up the where'd the McChicken sauce come from? Oh God, like, I don't know. I thought McChicken sauce was mayonnaise. 
It's not mayonnaise? I don't know. I didn't read the ingredients, really? but I don't want to. Ugh. Like, just the thought of having McChicken sauce. So, Ledwig says it's the creator's fault. He didn't create them. He was just sharing them. I think sharing them is just as bad. That's perpetrating the myth of it fake is. news. Yes. You're perpetrating the myth. The perpetrating the myth of fake news by doing that. Fake mayo. Fake mayo. Yeah, that, that was that was a bad well, thread. That, sure, went, that went wrong. I'm pretty sure there's no egg in that mayo. I'm pretty sure there's no egg in that mayo. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's some kind of weird stuff. How does how does translator say gif? Gif. Gift. Gift. <laughs> gif. Oh, so it's right. Yeah, that's right. Gift. Is it gif? It doesn't it's, know. It's, it's stuttering. It stopped. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> we broke it. Yeah, I think I think we hit our maximum ca- characters. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so when you see the star, 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 normally that means swearing. Bad. I yeah. think we. I think uh, someone rebooted one of the the end series machines that's doing the translation. Yeah. Uh, up there. Uh, okay. Uh, any. Uh, so uh, I've your money for you. Any support you've done? I've um, I've had to work my way through the Fall Creators update on a couple of machines at home. Um. I had to. Started. I had to hear from my wife that there was an issue because her. It wasn't a fall creators update. It was a Patch Tuesday update that applied when she was teaching. She does oh. consulting and teaching. Oh. Because of the zero day flash issue, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And she uses Chrome, and all the student machines use Chrome to use the software that she works with. And Chrome, all of a sudden, with this revision, blocked. Uh, all flash. Yep. Uh, with the latest update with the, the Chrome browsers too, and I'm like, okay, so I understand your issue. I understand you're upset by it, but it's it's not us that did that. Uh, this is the safety of Chrome kicking in to protect you from a zero day of something else. You're still supposed to fix it. I know, totally. But it's I was ultimately responsible for it. on her work machine. Nonetheless, I'm responsible for it. How are you? Re- so there's uh, got to be a there's got to be some contractual thing that says you're not allowed to touch that machine. Yeah. So uh, so the home machines are fine. They did that just good, and they're all good. Uh, I'm actually rebuilding a friend's machine, um, replacing a, a new video card, putting a new SSD in, and I'm having her before we do that work move all of her local files off her local machine up into OneDrive. Yep. Uh, especially now with the Fall Creators update with the files on demand to be able to get access to stuff on demand, which is nice. Um, and she's very excited about that, but she's cursing me every day. She sends me text messages updating the status because she's literally going through gigs upon gigs upon gigs of photos, oh, yeah. pictures, movies, documents, mm-hmm. music, and asking what needs to be moved and what doesn't need to be moved because her spinning rust hard drive uh, gave up once and is back again. I'm like, get the stuff off of there, back it up, it's probably and then move it off. Moving, yeah. uh, and then uh, replace it with a new one terabyte SSD drive that she bought. Yeah. Uh, which is nice. And then on top of that, at the same time, her secondary computer, which is a Dell all-in-one, it's a gorgeous Dell all-in-one machine that she has, uh, that hard drive died too. So I swapped that out for another 500 gig uh, SSD as well. And that's beautifully now running too. Mm-hmm. It just got the update. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we're good. That's kind of the stuff that I've been doing for mm-hmm. for updates. <laughs> what was that back? You're just you're just doing that just so you can stay awake. Are you? Exactly. J Shock is going to fall asleep. J Shock is moment. actively listening to our conversation, which mm-hmm. is awesome. I would believe. I, I want to say he's passively listening. Yeah. He's he's not actually listening to the audio stream Active, right now. Passive. He's listening to an audio book while he's, <laughs> he's pretending to listen to us. He's listening to, to another podcast, something that's better than this one. Yeah, he's listening to Twit. Uh, uh, oh no. <laughs> uh, I did a little bit of. Beer money. You did? I right. finally fixed my mom's printer. I thought she was using a 30 arc- foot cable. <laughs> 30 foot cable? Because the wireless wasn't working? The anymore. wireless kept dropping out for her. Because she's using the wireless on the cable modem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just like crap. Crap. Yeah. Every time, every time the cable modem drops, you should drops, buy her a her. ubiquity device and then you can remotely manage it. You can completely. I could. But if I leave it just the cable modem, my sister has to manage it. Okay, so you're delegating ah. off the responsibility. Oh, that's good. There you go. That can work. Yeah. yeah. That can work. Yeah. I'll buy so that. I fixed the wireless part. Cable. Nice. Here you go, Mom. Yeah. Use that. You just got a couple of thumbs up there. Nice. Just on the Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I, I like kind of saw it going by. Uh, I, I, I'm still waiting for the second access point to come. 
to patch into my device. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. And I think, honestly, I need, I need to take a picture of it this weekend. I might tackle <coughs> it this weekend. Um, I need to take a picture of just how un-IT pro-ish my cabling closet is in my house. It literally has pieces dangling off of the back of the structured wiring in the house and a shelf with my NAS device and the Ubiquiti key controller, USB, or, or not USB, Linux device that's on there. It's literally just dangling off the side. It looks like a dog's breakfast. The worst possible networking cable fiasco that's out there. I'm not surprised to hear so this. So I've, I've got to figure out, I've got to strategically rewire it. I'm probably going to have to invest a couple hundred dollars in new new technology to make it all look nice. That's what I want to tell my wife at least. Uh, and then it's going to look perfect. And then I can actually close, I can't even close the panel right now. It's so bad. Yeah, mine, mine, mine needs some organization, but it's not that bad. <coughs> you all right? Yeah. All right. You're okay. You just had that look of Good. I'm dying. Yeah. Uh, I had that look of, oh, God, I got a cough real loud. How do uh, I cover oh, yeah. my how mic? Do, how do I cover the microphone? Yeah. Uh, I, is this is this, is this random spending that we're yeah, talking about? I think here, it's right? possibly random spending. I think spending. we've kind of gone into random spending. Can we transition spending. to random can, spending? Yeah. Can, can, I, can I talk about the, the, the home automation lighting thing? The thing you're currently obsessed with? Well, okay, you realize I, it's a slippery slope. Uh, Once you start down the slope, you can't stop. It's like... It's like uh, it's like latex on Crack. the side of a hill with Mazzola oil that you would use to slide into a lake or something like that. I should, I I've never, never done that, of that. No, It works great, actually. You don't have to have water. Why you am just, I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Back home, we use whale blubber. But, okay. You know. um, so home automation system. So I've what started start? with lighting. I've started with lighting. And one of the things that I was looking to do, and, and I think I talked about this on the last program, uh, when we were at the Ignites. I think I've talked about it here. Do you go bulbs or do you go switches? I've gone switches. Switches is the way switches, to go? Switches is the way to go. Bulbs if you How can't much? get a switch. How much for a switch? Uh, about 59 bucks. So I got to spend 60 bucks on 600 light switches in my house. No, because you're not going to replace all of them. Why not? Well, I'm... I'm so again... got to do the kids' bedrooms. I went... Because my kids never turn first, off light in their bedroom. First thing I did is I went with what needed to be dimmed. Because what makes me crazy is the hallway lights on at full blare. Yeah. I'll agree so with that. So the first thing that I did is the master bath. Because at 4 o'clock in the morning before you go get on one of those 6 a.m. flights, <sighs> those big light bright, oh, yeah. light, big they burn bright the retinas lights. Out. Burn yeah. the retinas out. Uh, uh, so I put just a normal dimmer on that. Because I don't need a smart dimmer in the bathroom. <coughs> because if I'm going to try to turn it on smart wise... I'm either going to speak, which is going to wake people up, <laughs> or I'm going to use my phone, which is going to come at, you know, 400,000 lumens, uh, which is just as bad as having the bathroom lights on. So the first thing I did is I replaced that with a dimmer. And then I went and bought a some A smart bulbs, dimmer or a regular dimmer? Regular dimmer. So that's not, that's not 60 bucks. Uh, that was 40 bucks. 40 bucks. You're talking a difference of $20 to get something smart. That's, it's really $20 difference. Unless you're using the cheap, just normal on-off switches. And then... You can get some Z-Wave just on-off switches that are Z-Wave. Z-Wave. Okay, Z-Wave. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so the, that was the first step. Then the second step is the bulbs. Bulbs <laughs> matter. Um, I got a, a, a set of, of, of light bulbs for the bathroom at the local warehouse store. And they say they're dimmable. They are. <clears throat> they dim about that much. And then when you when the dimmer goes all the way down to the bottom, they say it's flickers, and it's just kind of annoying. So I had to uh, invest a little bit in some nicer nicer light bulbs, which I did the Philips uh, replaceables, which were fantastic. Uh, and then the second thing I started looking at is okay, which dimmer am I going to go? Which brand do you go? There's uh, there's several sev several. This is still like a there. regular dimmer you're talking about. That was you the haven't first even gotten a smart place. Yet. Smart. This is this is me going and like unscrewing a couple of things and putting it in. Do you realize what it? Uh, I just heard you tell a story about your Jeep. <coughs> I'm just about building just saying, a it's, boat for it's the a, hat. It's about a, repairing a hat. You got two and wires. You're criticizing me. You got two wires. You got for spending up. thirty seconds to talk about proper but dimming. You're talking LED. about a smart home, and it's a dimmer. They've had dimmers for years. Yes, but the proper bulb. Anyway. They've had you dinner need, for years. I'm yeah, trying to help people. Dinner. Okay. I'm trying to help people. Okay. We're going through this problem. Okay. So the, the next decision that I had to make is which brand do you go for? 
Uh, for dimmers? So, uh, for the switches. So, I've decided to go with the Lutron Cassetta. Are these the smart ones? These are the smart ones. So, this is not the dimmer? Nope. Do these dim? They dim. But they're smart. They're smart. Lutron. Lutron. Cassetta. Cass Cassetta. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Why those ones? Uh, it was an aesthetic thing. And then I also have several three and four way switches they, in the house. Are they the ones that actually, the, it's like a miniature remote control? Correct. That sits in the wall? Correct. And if you wanted to, you could take the remote control out? That's right. Well, yeah. Does it still work if the remote control is out? Because I would probably take. It's a normal remote control and you don't have to put it in the wall. So basically, you can leave six different remote controls inside the six different switches. So long as or you, you have one main controller, right? Yeah. And then you could actually take those six remote controls out so the kids don't take them and do their own thing with it. Right. And you could still well, control them smart. When you put them in the wall plate, they're attached. But you could pop them out, can't no. you? Oh, I didn't know that. Unless you pop the, the face plate off, no. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So you can use them, you know, have one next to the table. Yeah. Or you can put them in the wall. Okay. And the reason I went with this is the wiring... <laughs> Uh, when you're dealing with three and four way and, and what are you going to do with the traveler wire and making sure it's connected the right way, so on and so forth. When you get into the smart devices, you either have to, GE does a, a, a Z-Wave version, yep. which allows you to do it, but reconnecting those wires and making sure you've got the right ones is a little, can be a little tricky. I, um, yeah. I'll, I'll give you, you, I'll give have, you that. If you have an older house with the, with the, the not, not having the proper wire, uh, it can be tricky. So with the, the Lutron, uh, what you do is you connect the first one as normal, just as if it's a normal dimmer and everything, but you just cap off the, the red uh, traveler wire. And then you go to the other side and you actually cap off all the wires other than uh, you just cap off all the wires because it's basically battery controlled remote. <clears throat> And then you then you install the, the you install the remote just like a normal switch, and, and it works. And this both. is because it's a three way switch. It's yes, in two different right. spots in your house. Yep, two different spots controlling the same way. Okay, now you're confusing me. So I got to have you come over and do a consult at my place to okay. say buy this one for here and there. Do you charge installation fees? Yeah, of course. It's called beer money. Okay. <laughs> this is what we're talking about, okay. right? Well, right so how study. many of those smart cassetta? Yep versions did you buy so i have three of the actual dimmer switches and i have two <coughs> of the remotes <clears throat> so is there a difference with cassetta that it makes it dimmable versus non-dimmable or are they just all smart and they all do the same thing no so there are dimmer switches and then there's normal switches and i haven't gone down the path of any normal switching yet so it's only been the dimmers it's only been the dimmers that i'm and it's at. a three-way dimmer well in two places in my house, in the hallway upstairs and in the hallway downstairs, they're three-way. Do you have to buy a special version of the cassetta that nope. handles the three-way? Nope. Or can you all can the buy the normal handle? one and then you buy additional remotes. Or you buy a kit that has the two of them together. The problem with the kit is that they only have them in white. And I Your have... almond? Uh, light, uh, light, light almond. Light almond. Yes, light almond. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now, where do these tie into? Did you go with the smart home or did you go with the wink? I'm going with the wink. The wink. Yep, I'm going with the wink. The I Wink's was looking too. at the Philips. Oh, I was looking at the wink. It's the garage door opener made the call for wink. Yeah. So, the a lot of people are it, once you go down the path of one for the hub, you're kind of stuck down that path. It's like it's like a photographer. You're talking fifty dollars. No, no, no. But you're still it's like a photographer when you buy, when you commit to a platform, you buy the glass for your lenses. Uh, you're stuck with it, and you're, you, that's how you're going to be going. So yeah. you're an icon. I'm an icon guy as well. Yeah, um, icon, icon as well. Hey, we're all icons. Yeah, we um, share lenses. Yeah. The um, so the the wink works, uh, and has it show up inside your app? Show me your phone, man. So I I want to currently see. do not have the wink stuff I wanna, installed. Can I no. turn your lights on? I want to stop. <laughs> let me turn no. on your lights. I don't have the wink stuff installed yet. What? So you can only install. You can only control your smart lights with the. No, it's not been installed pad. yet. Oh, so you have it. So it's it's so you can only do it in the house with the controls, basically. It's not installed yet. You haven't put the light switches in. Correct. I've been out of town, dude. What okay. do you want? <laughs> I can. There are certain things I can do remotely. Wiring in light switches, not one of those things. Yeah. Uh, so I've gone cassetta with that. And cassetta. you've got you've got the Philips, the Hue, yeah, the Hues. Yeah. So and, and so I'm actually why, looking. Why did you I do will the get a Hue bulb because they have the smaller. Uh, ones that don't have to be plugged in uh, for my studio because I'm using a lot of power in the studio as it is. So there's small hue bulbs that don't get plugged in. Yeah, they, they just use they batteries. Just sit in a, yeah, they just sit in a little. Oh, and they and and they do up lighting, which if, would be great for the studio. If you guys are doing electrical work, 
Can I offer a small piece of advice? Yeah. Turn off the breaker first. That. No, um, I, I do it hot. It's much more entertaining. He licks his fingers you do. before yeah. testing. It's a great way to test the wires. One ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see him doing this. This is a sad thing. I've done it. The, there are timer switches that you can get. Yep. In your bathrooms, replace all the fan switches with timers. Yeah, Ooh. you could do that. I saw one that actually has a humidity um, automation that basically kicks it in because my, my family that's, never remembers to turn the fan on in the first place. That's that's great, except what if it's for other things? Oh, yeah. Well, then you can manually override it. <laughs> I just light a match. So <laughs> The... Uh, <laughs> The other thing that I have purchased and installed is the Ecobee uh, thermostat. Mm. Ecobee. Yeah, Ecobee. Ecobee. Ecobee however thermostat. you want to call it. Yes. Loving that. Yeah? Yeah, loving that. Is that the one that has the remote sensor yep. for different temperatures? You right. Can move it so, to so that it kind of keeps uh, everything balanced. I am going to go purchase another sensor, actually. Oh, yeah? Uh, there was an area of the house I didn't realize. Oh, yeah, we should probably... But does it Put turn it on only in that area, or is it turn it on everywhere? No, no. It's, so you can choose to have it. This is the master source. This is it, or it can follow you. Oh, yeah. And the following thing is actually pretty cool because when we go upstairs, then it's like, oh, yeah, there's people here. So we're going to turn on the heat a little longer upstairs because downstairs it gets warmer faster. Ah, I got it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's where I was going with that. The Akobi. Yep. Nice. And that ties into the Wink system as well. Yep. Uh, and it was super easy to install. I just Now, the trick becomes... Can we do control of the wink with intelligent assistance? Through things like a Cortana device? Cortana device? Yep. Google Home or yep, all of it. Eco all of it fits together. Echo. Echo? So I had, I, I had been looking and, and I, I asked a question. Amazon because this morning when I woke Amazon. up um, and I was looking on the Twitters, I saw that our friend Mary Jo uh, had done a review of the new Cortana Harman Kardon device. Harman Kardon. And I was curious as to what her final haven't read it yet decision was. Now I don't need it for the speaker. I need it for the Cortana control oh, yeah, could, because I've got Sonos in the house, and I don't yeah. want to replace the speakers. So I'm just trying to decide which way do I go? Do you go Amazon Alexa? Do you go Google? Do you go the Cortana? I'd love a hockey puck Cortana device if it ever comes out. Um, I may just no, be waiting wouldn't. too long. It's no. called it's called a computer. No. Yeah, the monitor you turn I'd, on. I'd be worried about a hockey book device with him around. Well, yeah, he could point, but he doesn't come over the house much. So. Well, that's good. Yeah. Then you'd be fine. The ban hasn't been lifted yet. No, it hasn't. <laughs> uh, CA says she uses the Vera controller. The, the restraining She's order standard expires Z next week. So. Or Z-Wave. Uh, and uh, also uses the CT100 thermostat. I'm also using some uh, normal GE Z-Wave uh, outlets. Oh, yeah? I'm replacing two outlets. Because we Why would have you do the, outlets? Uh, for lamps? Yep. Oh, okay. Z-Wave. For lamps. Lamps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> G-Z-Wave outlets. G-Z-Wave outlets. Some G-Z-Wave outlets. Uh, yeah, so for, for lamps, uh, also for um, uh, outdoors, I'm buying a little outdoor controller for the, for the holiday lights. <laughs> what are you laughing at the captioning? Jesus wave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... Yeah, Scott says he likes the uh, Echo B because he finds, uh, but he does find that it has to overcool the first floor to get the rooms with sensors upstairs to be close to where you want them. Nice. It's the same thing with us. We <coughs> have to turn it way down lower on the first floor. Unless you get a dual floor system, which is money, which I don't have. Money. Uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm going. The smart home stuff. I've just got to make the decision as to what is going to be. I didn't think I'd want voice control, but it uh, just seems like seems if nice. you're going to go in there, why, why not just go? Oh, yeah. Hey, computer system, turn on the lights in the kitchen, eh? Alexa, turn on lights. Alexa, you just... If, if you have... Yeah, you just started you just, that for a bunch of people. You, Alexa, you, purchase Tim Hortons. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you ask Alexa something in Canada, do you have to end with A? <laughs> turn on the lights in the kitchen, eh? A? <laughs> that's, the, that's the accentuator. It knows it's the command is done. Uh, and, and so the interesting thing is just as we get done talking about home automation, our main man, JK, Joe Kelly, has joined. And uh, he missed it's already all. over. He missed Whole out. segment. Missed it. Whole show. Missed it. We have, uh, Comes in 58 minutes the, into the yeah, program. Yeah, the, the, the band's about to strike up here. We haven't talked about beer at all. <laughs> it's because we haven't you know? done anything with Nothing beer. Nothing beer. Well, uh, Nothing. I've discovered a leak in my kegerator CO2 line, so I've lost two tanks of CO2. I have to go and find out where the leak is. 
That sucks. Did you lose um, the, the, the backup one that you were using to test? The backup one I also went to. So basically, I got one left. <laughs> You've gone through 25, 25 pounds, pounds of, CO2 of CO2 is gone. Two. In his garage. Uh, in my garage. So you are it, causing global so, warming. <laughs> but actually, I get really sleepy when I go in the garage. I didn't know why. <laughs> so apparently, now I know. Um, no one's half the battle. It is. Uh, so that's that. Um, and, you know, I'm. Uh, we've been talking about conicals forever, purchasing. And so I'm like finally getting around to clearing up my inbox to actually purchase a conical, I do believe. To be able I, to I saw your post. Are, are you begging for a coupon code? Is that what you're doing? I was just seeing if there's one out there. That's all. Okay. You, know, you never Fair know. Enough. What post where? I just tweeted about looking for a conical yeah. yesterday. That's all. So, um, And uh, right we'll get there eventually. Not much. There they are. There's the band. We need it. We need three safe work safe words. We do. Uh, in the chat if you guys want to add three work safe words. Yes. Uh, and then I'll say... I'll say adios to everybody uh, in the program. Exactly. Uh, So that does it again for another exciting episode. Is it exciting? Ish. Ish. Of the Patch and Switch program. Big thanks to everybody who uh, locked in. And I'm going to try to do this. It's really hard to kind of figure out who is here. But uh, Joe Kelly, uh, Ledwig, CA, Adam Carter has joined. Steve and CA, uh, we said CA, Luna joined. Uh, Jay Flo, who's in the room. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, Vizio MVP guys around. Uh, Bender joined us. Wow. Uh, Aubrey, Steve Enns, uh, the other Steve that was here, Steve Lane, uh, Frederick, we saw. I just, there's no single place to look at names. Can't see you, man. And anyway, that's everybody. Uh, see you in a couple weeks' time. Until then, have a weekend, everybody. Peace.